<laughs> hey, how's it going everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you something a little bit old, but also kind of fun and cool at the same time. Uh, this is going to be how you can download some hex files and use them to create and burn your own PS1 mod chips. We're going to be using some pick chips and we'll also need a pick programmer. So first off for that, I'm going to have several links down below in the description. Uh, I'm going to have a link to this downloads page on Eurasia. Now you'll probably need to register for this site, but trust me, it's trustable. It's been a great site. It's been long standing for quite a while and I've gotten several great downloads from here. The reason being is that there's so many hex files for the mod chip. So if you want to you uh, create a Mayumi chip, if you want to create a MM3 chip, you can do that. Uh, you're also going to need, of course, a pick programmer and some pick chips. So like right here, for example, uh, you can see this, uh, it says code works with 12C508, 12C508A, it works with these four chips. And uh, you can really get any of them, honestly. I have, I think I have some 12C508s and I have some 12C508As. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use a 12C508A. So for that, you might be wondering what you need to purchase. Well, you'll need to get a programmer. I recommend this one because I actually purchased this exact one. Yeah, it's a generic one, it might not have the best reviews on here, but it actually worked for me. I tried to cheap out and I bought like a five or six dollar one on eBay. That thing did not work at all, no matter what I did. I bought this one, it's been working consistently. So, as you can see, it's 10, 11 dollars, it's really not that expensive. Then, as for the pick chips, I would not recommend picking those ones up on Amazon. I actually recommend picking them up on eBay because, I mean, look at how cheap they are right here. You can get 10 of them for six dollars, or you can get 25 for about 27 dollars. You can get them much cheaper on here on Amazon you get three of them for like eight or nine dollars So it's much better to go with one of these sources right here. I end up getting my chips from China I've installed several of them. They seem to be okay so once you've got all the hardware, you got your downloads, there's also going to be one more download. It's also going to be this K150 zip file that I've prepared and I've put in the downloads below. And that's going to have our necessary drivers and the software we're going to need. So I'll go ahead and exit out of this. And first off, you want to take whatever hex dump you have and the K150 zip file. And you just want to extract both of these right here. Once that's completed, these are hex files. You can check them out if you want to. We're going to use the mm3usa.hex file. And he wants to go into the K150 folder now. And he wants to find this right here, which is the PL2303 driver installer. And before you hook up your programmer, don't hook it up yet. But before you do that, you want to right click. You want to run this as administrator and let this install. As you can see, we're done. Now at this point, you can take your USB cable, hook it up to your computer, and hook it up to your programmer, and let it install on your computer. Once it's done installing, you want to go into your device manager, and when this comes up, you want to go down to ports, and you're going to find it right here, the prolific USB to serial COM port, and it is COM4, at least on my computer it is. Uh, what's really important is you want to make sure this shows up, and you want to make sure there's no yellow triangle. If it looks like this, you're safe. If you have a yellow triangle, that's a driver issue, and if it's not showing up, that might be another issue of some kind. Try another USB port, try another USB cable, just try different things, but you want this to show up with no yellow triangle. So, once you know what COM port you're using, I'm using COM4, you want to go into your DIY pack, and run microburn. Now when this comes up, it's gonna say there appears to be a problem accessing the COM port. That's because the wrong one is selected. So we need to change a few things. First off, you go to file, programmer, make sure K150 is selected. Then go to port and change this value to the correct value that's on your computer. So as you can see, mine was four. So I'm gonna press okay right here and wait for this to come up. And it's going to say the board is not responding, about to apply a reset, so you can hit OK and it's going to reset this. Now you might get another error right here saying reset fail, please check, but just hit OK. And if it says ready, then you should be good at this point. The other thing we need to do is we need to get our chip selector. So you want to click this and you want to select what chip you're going to be using. So I need to go over to the 12 series, I just barely missed it, and I'm going to use a 12C508A. This is very important, make sure you select the proper one. Now you're going to see this little diagram right here. 
If your board is turned on, that's totally okay. You can have it plugged in at, actually that's optimal. But what you now want to do is you want to take one of your pick chips and you want to put it in the exact position it's showing right here. It has to be in the exact same holes. Uh, this part right here uh, where it has the yellow dot, you wanna line that up with the dot that is on your chip. So it needs to look exactly like that. So go ahead and drop your chip into the programmer. Now at this point, once the chip is loaded onto your programmer, you want to go down here and you want to hit read. It's going to read your ROM. As you can see, ROM data, this is what your chip should look like if it's never ever been used. Now, sometimes what could happen is the only difference right here, aside from all the Fs, is this down here, this uh, oscillator value. What you want to do is you want to just take a screenshot of this, just write it down, just do anything with it. As you can see, mine is C58. You can even double check this by going to Calib right here for Calibrate. Click that, and as you can see, that is 0C58. Make a note of that, because we want to make sure that value does not change. And if it does change, you're going to have to manually change it on your own. So once we have that, go ahead and hit cancel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to verify this as well too. Data verified. It's completely blank. We're good on at this point. So what we need to do now that we can verify that we can read the ROM and we can verify that that ROM dump is complete, we now need to go over to load. Just go ahead and say no to this because you don't really want to save just, you know, a blank ROM and go over to where your hex dumps are right here and grab whatever one you want to use. Since I'm in the USA, I'm going to grab mm3usa.hex. As you can see, this is going to look much different. You really don't need to focus on this here all too much, except right down here with Calib. So when you click that, it's going to ask, do you want this changed? Say yes and change this to 58 or whatever your last two numbers are. Mine, as we saw, was 0C58, so I'm going to keep that the same. Now it will say right here, you're about to insert calibration data into the hex file. I'm going to go ahead and continue. And as you can see, it now says at the end, 0C58. We need this OSCAL value right here to match what exactly is on the chip itself. You're gonna have to do this with every single chip that you have, so just verify that. Now we can hit cancel right here. Once that's all completed, we have it all loaded up, we have our OSCAL value set. You can go ahead and now hit program. When you hit program, it's gonna bring up this message, continue to program the chip. You can hit yes. It's now going to do that, programming complete. You can go ahead hit verify as well too. Data verified, and that should be about it. What you can even do right here is hit clear. I'm not going to save that. And now you can read your chip over. So now, as you can see, check this out. Our chip data is right there. The chip has been flashed with the MM3USA hex file. So we now have a ready to go mod chip that is ready to install. And our OSCAL value is right there on the chip. So congratulations, you've now burned your first mod chip. If this is the first time you've ever done this. Anyways, at this point, you can now go ahead and install the mod chip, whichever way you choose. But this is the guide on how to at least go about doing this, creating them and such. And if you're making multiple mod chips, this does save you quite a bit of money because as I said, you can buy the chips for quite cheap and then the programmer is not too much either but anyways hope this video helped you all out if you enjoyed it a like would very much be appreciated if you absolutely hated it a dislike is fine as well too